Hey, what's up? I'm Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things e-drum related. Today, I want to talk about something that a lot of electronic drummers struggle with, how to get a really raw, natural, slightly gritty sound out of your drum module. The reason why this is a problem is because most drum modules kind of suck. I know it's not a secret, but I got to say it. But before we get into the strategies that I'm going to go over in a little bit further in the video, let me just say the number one way to get a more natural sounding drum set that sounds a little more gritty is to buy drum software. I know people hate it when I say stuff like that because you know it costs money, but unfortunately, it's the truth. Whenever you spend 120 bucks, you can get better sounds than a Roland TD30, which originally cost me $2,000. It hurts for me to say that, but don't worry, I'm not gonna keep talking about that throughout the video. Just wanna let you know, if you're going for the good results, spending money will get you there faster. Anyway, let's get into the strategies. These are really simple ideas. None of this is groundbreaking or blow your mind, but sometimes the simple ideas do give you really good results. So strategy number one, if you're one of those guys that always goes into the drum module, into the EQ section, and just turns down the mids a lot, stop doing that if you're going for a raw sound. A lot of people that are new to doing EQ on drum sets and just sound in general, a lot of times they'll take the mids and they'll just murder them. They'll turn them all the way down. And this is really, really bad. For those of you that are really new to just EQ and just sound in general, think of the entire sonic spectrum, you know, all the sound you hear, and divide it into three sections. The lows, the mids, and the highs. The lows are responsible for your kick drum and your floor tom, stuff like that. The highs are like the really piercing sounds, like your cymbals, your hi-hats, the snap of your snare drum. And the mids kind of glue them all together. And they're not really exciting to listen to if you just listen to them by themselves. So what a lot of people do is they think to themselves, well, all I really want is piercing highs of the cymbals and the rumbling lows of my kick drum. Who cares about the mids? We'll just turn them down. You're literally removing one third of the entire sonic spectrum and that hurts your sound a lot. And if you're going for a more raw, acoustic, natural sound, then all your grittiness, that's all tied up in the mids. And just as a general rule, take a very light touch to everything that you're doing. Jurassic changes rarely ever sound good in the long run. They might sound really good in the moment, but when you step back, when you go get a coffee and you come back, you realize it actually sounds pretty darn terrible. Here's a sound example so you can sort of hear what it sounds like when you remove the mids and then you put them back in. So as you can hear, it's a pretty drastic difference, especially if you're listening through headphones. And the real power of EQ comes in when you can EQ individual instruments. Like on my Roland TD30, I can EQ the cymbal separately, the snare, the kick, and that's when you can use the different frequencies to make your sound even better. I recommend go watch like a 30 minute tutorial on this because there are like two hour seminars on how to EQ drums. I'm not even kidding. Go check them out on YouTube, they're there, and they'll help you out a lot with your sound. Strategy number two is adjust the room size and ambience mics. Now, what am I talking about here? Inside a drum software, a lot of times they'll have the mics that are over each individual drum, like the kick, the snare, the toms, the cymbals, and then they'll have a separate mic, like way off somewhere in the corner of the room, and it's just there to mic the ambience of the room, the sound of the drums bouncing around the walls. And you can actually lower that room ambience up and down, and it's called the room mic or the ambience mic. Drum software gives you the ability to do this. Inside of drum modules such as my Roland TD30, I have a different control that sort of gets to near the same goal. I can put my drums in a virtual room. This is one big problem with electronic drum modules. They sound so sterile. They sound like a scientist hit this drum and then wrote down a calculator. It doesn't sound real. It doesn't sound natural and raw. With my Roland T30, I can put my drums in a virtual studio or a virtual you know, arena. If I put it in a room that sounds nice, it will breathe a little bit of life into the drums. They'll sound a little more open. They'll breathe a little bit and it sounds nice. Here's some audio examples of that happening.
Now, to me personally, that sounded way more realistic. The drums felt a little bit more alive. Again, this all comes down to experimentation. You're going to have to just spend, you know, half an hour messing around with this stuff. But just wanted to let you know that the tool is there and it makes your drums sound a little more gritty and a little more natural. Okay, so let's move on to strategy number three. If you're going for a more raw, open, natural sound, make sure that you don't have the muffling too high. Within Roll and Drum modules, I can add virtual moon gels and O-rings and stuff like that in order to cut out the resonance. And then within stuff like a cap percussion KT4, within the drum module, you decide how many seconds it can ring out. So this is a really interesting tool. You might wanna cut out the resonance a little bit for certain song types, but in general, if you're going for a more natural sound, you wanna make sure you open them up most of the way. Again, this goes down to each individual drum. I don't believe in open kick drum sounds. I wanna have that a little bit muffled. It depends on the situation, but here's a before and after sound comparison so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So moving on to the next strategy, and this one's incredibly stupidly simple, but hang in there with me, turn up the cymbals a little bit. Unfortunately, a lot of electronic drummers, when they first switch over from acoustic, they just turn down the cymbals for some unknown reason. I don't know why, maybe they're going for a certain blend of the different sounds. When you back off the cymbals to half as loud as they're supposed to be, you might not realize you're actually hurting the overall sonic feel of your drum set. Artificially lower volumes of certain instruments when they're not supposed to be that quiet in the first place. It's a very small thing, but once you do it, you'll realize it has a lot of benefits. Now you have consequences. You can't just hit the cymbal as hard as you want to because you gotta hit it quieter so you get a quieter sound that comes out of your headphones. It has a lot of great benefits. It sounds more realistic. And to show you how unnatural it sounds, here's an example of it. So moving on to the last tip, use compression if your drum module or drum software has it. It immensely improves the quality of your sound. Now I realize this isn't a tip that helps you make your drums sound more gritty and raw and stuff, but it does give them oomph, it does give them punch, and it gives them a fuller body to the sound. If you're new to compression and you don't really know what it is, it's all in the name, actually. It takes the high frequencies and low frequencies, and it compresses them. And it just makes the sound a whole lot better. I'm not some sort of you know audio nerd that knows everything about the inner workings of compression and stuff. Go watch some tutorials on them. Again, there's like hour-long seminars you can go watch that explain this fully. But using compression does immensely improve your sound. And a lot of times, drum softwares make it really easy. They'll just have a little dial or a little fader that goes up and down, and you can decide how much compression you're gonna put on your drum sound. Here's an audio example. Now I realize none of these tips were earth shattering or like game changing innovations, but sometimes it's the simple little things that either make or break your sound. And a lot of people are new to electronic drums and hopefully this helped you if you're one of those guys. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching the video. See you later.